Okay, so the day has finally come. I am ready to share my testimony. This is a video that is way different than the other ones that I've ever done. If you know me, I love to share more about entrepreneurship, business, but there is a Bible verse that I was reading yesterday and it was in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29 to 11 basically. And Jeremiah is this prophet from the Bible who had to give very terrible prophecies to the people in the Old Testament. And people were very mad at him because he wasn't telling them what they wanted to hear. So he was complaining to God saying, God, why have you made me do this? Why have you misled me through this path? Everybody is making fun of me trying to kill me um why have you done this and then he says but if i say i'll never mention the lord or speaking his name his word burns in my heart like a fire it's like a fire in my bones and this really stood out to me because i have been feeling like that for a long time you cannot compare me with jeremiah but i have definitely been feeling like there is just something burning inside of me that wants to get out and sharing a testimony is something that is not easy at all i have personally watched a lot of testimonies on youtube and just online overall and seeing how brave people are to share those details of their lives and what took them to follow jesus is just incredible to me it has been so encouraging for my walk of faith so i feel like i've already gone through so much that it would be almost stupid not to share with you um how god has been moving in my life so i'm originally from venezuela i was born and raised over there and i grew up being a catholic i was in a catholic private school we would literally pray as part of our curriculum in school if you were to say that like we had to go and confess our sins to the priest and it was something that was already in the schedule so i was already like confessing my sins and learning about jesus growing up but obviously i was more involved into the religious aspect of it and not really having a relationship with him i can't really complain about how i grew up at all my parents weren't really from a wealthy background but they still made it because they worked really hard to get what they wanted um but i guess the first time that i was ever really rejected was when i was born um my mom wasn't really married to my dad and it was just a situation where i guess i wasn't supposed to be born even though i was supposed to be born and my mom really wanted to have me a lot of people told her not to do it because i was going to be born outside of a marriage uh, but she still did it she still decided to have me and growing up um she got married to my stepdad which was the one that raised me but i always had that feeling of rejection from a lot of people in my family because i was the one that was you know race outside of the marriage i was the one that wasn't really the daughter of my stepdad like by blood i was the one who was also not very close to her birth dad so i always felt this little pain inside of me but it wasn't really like affecting me big time or i wasn't really aware of it until i grew up but when i was 17 it was actually the first time that i opened youtube and i found a video that was very compromising. It was a sexual video and I remember just looking at it and my body was feeling certain things and I decided to play around with it and you know start searching more videos and start doing certain things that weren't necessarily very pure. That was my first introduction to porn. I have never really spoken publicly about my addiction to porn but it's something that started when i was 17. i was still saving myself for marriage but i definitely had like some sort of sexual encounters with people and from the first moment i felt like it was so wrong like it was it was just stealing something out of me i wanted to move to the u.s by the time that i was going to graduate high school and i was able to do that because of my family they ended up moving with me my original plan was to go to college in boston and just build a career a profession and make it in america but that wasn't able to happen because of the situation in venezuela so i ended up coming with my family unexpectedly back in 2014 the end of 2014 and everything was way different than i had expected it to be i couldn't go to college because we were broke my family had come to the u.s with less than ten thousand dollars and i remember that i spent an entire year just trying to get a job but i didn't have my work permit back then so it was just so hard so i would just cry every 
night trying to understand why God had put me in that position where I couldn't work, I couldn't study, I didn't have much to do. So when I finally got my work permit, I started working at a job and I started making money. Um, I met someone in one of those jobs, you know, I ended up falling in love with and we were back in Naples back then. If you don't know where Naples is, it's basically two hours from Miami, which is where I currently live. So I met him, he was a little bit older than me, not extremely older, but at least like seven or eight years older than me. I was 19 back then and he told me that he was gonna move to Miami. We were already dating for a couple months and I was already feeling so bad in Naples. I was so bored and I was already in love with him. Yes, in two months. So I told my parents I'm gonna go to Miami with him. I have already been a few times with him. It looked so fun. It looked like it was the right move. So I went to Miami with him and I started already living with him. Big mistake in always. Um, we ended up getting married and everything by then was feeling like it was right you know i had a partner that was committed to me he even got married to me i was living in miami and when we got married he pushed me to start working at this club in miami that i hadn't even been to before because i was only 20 by that time but he pushed me to work at this club that happened to be a strip club and the money was great right i wasn't a stripper but i was a waitress in a strip club and it was obviously one of the best clubs in Miami I was doing really good and I wasn't even feeling like something was wrong back then so we got married it wasn't anything too big too formal it was just very quick you know things started to happen in the sense that he was becoming just very mad that I was making more money than he was making I was also very young and foolish so I didn't understand that like a man is supposed to have a role in the relationship I was just really in love and I wanted to make sure that he was okay very stupid um, so we would have a lot of fights all the time I have never been a person that fights I am very peaceful I like to have conversations with people and I hate confrontations but this person was like the complete opposite of me um, and he got to a point where he got a little bit um abusive you know i've never shared this online before just because i feel like i'm already past that life i'm already past even like this specific situation i don't even feel bad anymore about it but there obviously was a part of me back then that was suffering so much it was to the point where i would get in my car and i would call the domestic violence hotline I would call them and I would just be like, this is happening to me, I feel like it's not okay, I feel like my feelings are not being validated, I feel like he just enjoys treating me like this and they would, you know, give me some advice and I'm grateful for those organizations and even people in my life that were back then helping me out, um, but for at least a year I was just suffering, just suffering there was a night when I, I never thought I would talk about this. There was a night when I was sleeping in my closet because I couldn't sleep next to him. It was just a lot of years of not validating my feelings and feeling like I was always doing something wrong. Feeling like I was the problem. I was also still working at the club, so my life overall and the people around me weren't necessarily the best um, friends or the best influence either so he was also mad at that and i found myself a lot of times just trying to escape you know i remember that when everything ended it was because he had yelled at me for something extremely human and like innocent and instead of me fighting and crying i said i'm just gonna go out i'm just gonna go out so i had lied to him and then i had left and obviously when he found out it was like a very more violent violent situation and that's when i decided to leave and to let you know what took me to get out of it in that moment uh i'm not gonna lie it was because i had gone to a network marketing presentation and they were just so motivated and i remember just seeing people being so happy and just talking about dreams and motivation and i was like i just i want to be this happy i can't believe that i have been stuck in a situation where i am not happy and i'm so young i was only 21 back then and crying almost every week 
almost every day. I didn't even cry um, after I left. I cried the day I left, but I didn't cry afterwards because it was so toxic that I just knew that it wasn't right for me. So you would think that by this time I'm safe, everything's good, but it really wasn't because I was still working at the club. So I moved in with my aunt. She was also in Miami. And this is when a lot of things started to, to change, you know, but they were changing for the good. I was seeing someone that was an amazing influence in my life. I felt like he was going to be the one. I was surrounding myself by, by better friends. I was starting to do business. I was starting to learn about social media and all the things that you see in this channel. I, I was starting to do good in life, even though I was definitely still broke in a lot of ways because I was trying to fake it until I made it which I do not recommend anyone to do but for a lot of times I thought it was doing pretty good even though I had just gotten divorced that year so everything was doing great I had moved to my dream apartment in Brickell, Miami which is like one of the most expensive cities in Miami and I feel like I was starting to live my dream life I was still working at the club even though I was already doing business because I hadn't really made it yet and then the person that I was seeing ended up moving somewhere else Else. and by the time that he moved away and I was alone in Brickell it was January of 2019 and I go to Naples to visit my family okay my family was still in Naples and it was my brother's birthday so I go over there we celebrate together and I was still broke so I had to go back that night I really wish I hadn't but I went back that night to Miami and the next day, I get a call from my mom telling me that, that they had taken my dad to the hospital. And I remember the night before, um, he had hugged me so hard. Just to give you context, like my dad is my stepdad. And he was the one that raised me my whole life. And the one that gave me like a lot of love. And and she tells me she's super scared and that they told him they told the, the doctors told her that they thought he wasn't gonna make it and my dad was perfect the night before you know what I mean like it wasn't like he was sick or anything and then I started driving to Naples which is a two-hour drive I'm crying the whole time I'm praying that year before that day my dad had become a pastor and he was trying to build a ministry online and nobody was supporting him especially me i wouldn't make fun of him but i wouldn't really like support him or understand him when i went to naples that morning and i'm at the hospital um the doctor said that he had a stroke and that his brain had almost like no response and that he was probably not gonna make it he was most likely not gonna make it he was only 53 or so he was very young he had so much love for god you know a few days pass by we're praying i am right there next to him trying to understand what's happening and then um about four days later um they asked us if we want to unplug him and we had made the decision that if he wasn't gonna actually live that you know that was gonna be the best decision and then without uh, without them having to unplug him he naturally started to die he naturally um that same day or that same night he just he passed away and it was probably one of the worst days of my life um in a lot of sense so after that i went back to miami um probably the same night because i had to make money i remember borrowing money from from a friend i couldn't even tell um the people in my life that i needed help because i was so obsessed with portraying something online that i didn't want people to know that i was like struggling and that i was needing help so a friend um helped me out now you would think that after this i found jesus you know i found jesus my dad probably helped me but that was not the case i mean they were helping me obviously from heaven but i had to go through a lot before that so that year it was probably one of the worst years of my life i was still working at the club i had this friend the friend that helped me get the money to burn my dad she 
was a person that was one of these Miami sugar babies, Miami find a guy to help you type of um, girl. I'm no longer friends with her, but she was working with me and she was always telling me like, you know, just, just gotta, you know, like let yourself go, like be a little bit sexier at work or let's go and like talk to my sugar daddy so we can help you and your family out. And back then my mom was still in Naples for a few months. I wanna say at least five to six months by herself, you know, struggling, still working with my brother. And I was helping them pay their rent while I was trying to pay my rent and during that time i hadn't really processed the fact that my dad had passed away i was just trying to run away from the feeling so i would hang out with these people that always wanted to party always wanted to do something with me i felt like i was finally being accepted somewhere i felt like they were comforting me because they wanted to hang out with me but i needed more money and then people would just give me like crazy amounts of money but obviously people always wanted to do more you know and they would offer more and i was surrounded by all these friends that were in the industry who would make twenty thousand dollars a month and more just by doing a little more i don't want to get into details or even tell you that i crossed the line um because i don't think i i crossed it to a point where a stripper would but i, I definitely let people pay me for more than i was supposed to really do i definitely acted impure a lot of times and these are things that i have never really told anyone i kept hanging out with the same people there was a moment when i fell into the trap because i would always be the person that was out with them but i never did drugs like they did or like i didn't want to drink too much they would make fun of me because i was the good girl they would always be like she's a good girl don't offer her anything until one day i'm still in that deep void of not confronting my reality and i told them like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do it you know i'm gonna i'm gonna try something so for about two to three months i started trying different types of drugs but i would just kept trying to fill this void and i was just so deep so deep in there so deep in that hole i just kept getting deeper and deeper drugs i was still working at the strip club everything was just so bad i remember going to a club and i was seeing someone that i was starting to really like and he had invited me to this club he was a little bit more older than me and i was like really into him and he was making out with another girl like right in front of me he was right here the other girl was here they were making out and that's when i knew that's when i knew <laughs> i know right like after everything that i've shared like this is the moment that i knew that i had gone way too far i was like how am i allowing this i feel like for a moment maybe he even thought that he could have us both at the same time but it's something in my heart told me like this is it like obviously yeah, i went home and cried i was in the car crying with my friends the whole time i remember that that weekend i said that's it I'm gonna go to church. I'm gonna go to church and I enter church and the topics that they were talking about were relationships and forgiveness and uh, I just remember walking into that place and feeling the presence of the Lord. I could breathe. I could breathe again. I could breathe again and uh, I feel like in I feel like probably in the first time when the pastor said who wants to follow Jesus, I think I was raising my hand right there because I was like I'm so done with this life like I just I really want to follow him I don't know what this is I don't understand why my dad loved him so much but let's try so I started going to church a few more times and then boom pandemic happens yes this wasn't this was a little bit recent all of this situation i was dating someone that was amazing amazing to me but we weren't really meant to be together thankfully this person was really helping me out during that situation i want to say his name <laughs> um just because his name has such an incredible meaning but i feel like i would totally let people know who he is so i'm not gonna do that but let's just say that his name means um god is with us and maybe you can find it and understand now who i'm talking about i'm so sorry but during that entire time that i was suffering this person was 
helping me go through the worst the worst he was always there with me and it didn't work out unfortunately but i got to feel that love not just from him but i i've all i always told him i feel like and my mom told me the same thing we feel like he was being used by god in that moment he wasn't a christian but he i, we, I feel like he was being used by god back then i was obviously in the middle of the lockdown and i was getting way closer to god i was watching sermons all the time i started to read the bible a little bit finally walking into the right path and uh, god started to provide god started to deliver me he gave me a business so obviously because of the lockdown i had lost the job at the club which you already know how bad it was for me and i have finally had clients coming my way and people wanting to work with me with my marketing agency which back then it was just an idea and then clients started to come in it's incredible how he started just moving in my life so quickly and saying you're gonna get out of brickle you're gonna get out of the city i totally forgot to tell you all of this but during that entire year where i was suffering and doing the drugs bar and all all that stuff i had to move my family in with me so i was like i was struggling you know because living in brickle with two people me paying for everything it was a lot like the way that i had on my shoulders after my dad passed away it has always been like a lot and still to this day is different because now i have jesus but back then it was too hard just for myself so we ended up moving um to another part of the city that it was a little bit more calm and god started moving in my life but i wasn't in his presence the way i am right now and this was about two years ago from the moment i'm doing this video and the reason why i'm sharing all of this with you is because i want to let you know that i made my decision two years ago but i i didn't even feel safe until probably a few months ago because i didn't understand how everything worked i didn't understand what being a christian really meant until really last year so a lot of things happened along the way i was still doing things that weren't really pure for a long time but i was getting better and one day um i finally started to commit to reading the bible so i bought this bible last year probably around may of last year and it's like a journaling bible i remember that i started to commit into understanding who jesus was and everything started to change in my life it wasn't just the church or the community because i was part of you know communities i was going to church consistently but it was the word that truly transformed my heart when i started reading the word is when i really decided to let god into my life so i'm gonna read a very important verse um to you all i tell you the truth those who listen to my message and believe in god who sent me have eternal life they will never be condemned for their sins but they have already passed from death to life that is john chapter 5 um verse 24 and then before that we have john chapter 3 verse 3 jesus replied i tell you the truth unless you are born again you cannot see the kingdom of god and then later around that it says you must be born again don't be surprised when i say that john chapter 3 verse 16 for this is how god loved the world he gave his one and only son so that everyone who will listen to him will not perish but have eternal life god sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged so i was reading this bible verses and understand then that i was finally being born again so everything that i had done jesus had already forgiven me for i'm not sitting here and telling you that you can be a terrible person and that you know it's fine because you're gonna go to heaven i'm telling you that because i accepted jesus in my life i was completely transformed not only i have eternal life but I was actually transforming my heart. So I'm gonna give you a few testimonies on how this has happened in my life. The first time I ever really realized this is after I was starting to read the word, I went to a concert in the same club that I used to work at. I went to a concert of this reggaeton artist, his name is Jay Cortez, and he was one of my favorites, if not my favorite reggaeton artist. And if you don't if you're not familiar with this 
type of music this is what we would call the secular music in his songs you know he's always talking about sex drugs and he actually mocks God in a lot of his songs so I was you know really obsessed with this music and I remember going to his concert in that club and he comes out and for the first song the entire stage is red and he's wearing thorns he's dressed up as a devil and he's singing songs and lyrics that are mocking on God now I used to love this music like I used to dance to this music I even went to the club that night at 2 a.m. I was not doing anything before that I was just with my friend waiting until 2 a.m. because I knew he was gonna come out and we were gonna enjoy the music and, you know on the outside I was proud Probably, you know excited but the moment that he got out on stage I felt like I wanted to throw up I was not okay with anything of what was happening I was not okay with him mocking God I didn't want to be there I was so uncomfortable and that was the last time that I ever stepped foot into um, that club and it's crazy because i went to a bible study right after that concert like a week afterwards and this person was mentioning that once you have the holy spirit in you you're no longer gonna desire the same things you used to desire before and your body is now gonna be disgusted at certain things you used to do because the holy spirit is now in your body like now my body is god's temple it really is so i got to respect it in all ways with the things that i put in my ears the things that i say with my mouth the things that i'm watching i feel like this testimony is so hard to do because i keep forgetting things so i might have to do more videos about this but during that time when I I was like in the middle of the pandemic going through all that struggle and until up until this time when i had realized that the holy spirit was inside of me i went through like a very bad illness so i had a problem with my hormones i had a hormonal imbalance and i don't want to give you any like too many details about it but i couldn't even sit i was constantly bleeding and it was just so painful i was in constant pain all the time there were a lot of things that happened to my body during this year um, of 2020 and 2021 that were so painful i couldn't work out without feeling this pain and back in 2021 around the end of the year i went to the doctor again and they told me that they had seen some changes in the cells which probably means that i either had pretty bad infection or i had cancer so you can imagine how i was feeling back then i was already feeling like the holy spirit was in me i was already feeling like i was starting to walk in obedience but i had this past i had this entire past horrible things that i did and i was just feeling guilty and feeling like okay maybe this is the result of everything that i've done for a couple months i was doing tests and going to the doctor everything pointed at the fact that i was definitely sick you know not only i was feeling it but everything in the test was pointed at that i remember i was already serving at church and i went to a team night and they were singing the song too good to not believe and i was trying to worship by standing up and i couldn't because my body was in so much pain that i i had to stay sitting down that's how much pain i was in and i was just praying to god like please help me help me like i'm so sorry i was really repentant and if you don't understand what repentant means it means to have a change of direction in your life it's not only to feel guilty of your sins but actually like have a change and i was already changing so much but i was i was still not forgiving myself and not letting god forgive me he had already forgiven me but i was not accepting that forgiveness and that love for him and i was still trying to have control over everything and then i had a lot of prayer and my mom was praying a lot for me and i had people praying for me and then i went to the doctor and then i go to get the results and they tell me i don't know what you did but you are completely healthy and clean of anything you don't have anything like our tests were probably a mistake because you don't have anything you are in so much health and the moment they told me this i knew i knew that 
God had truly saved me. I knew that he had forgiven me because he had given me another chance. There was no chance that I was going to survive all these years of sin and impurity and all the disgusting things that I went through and all the pain. But up until this moment, it all made sense. It all made sense because I had to trust him. I had to finally put my trust in him. And I finally understood that he was the only one who could carry my pain and he is so powerful and almighty he took care of me and he gave me a second chance so i decided to truly walk in obedience this time and truly understand his word and what he meant and what he wants for my life and i went through 21 days of prayer and fasting i was still having an addiction for porn i was paying for porn at this time and during those 21 days of prayer and fasting god finally healed me from my addiction i have not had desires like the ones i used to have before i deleted accounts because i had separate accounts just to do that i decided to walk in obedience and it's not only like i made the choice like god truly got into my heart and changed all my desires and changed my heart he refined me, he purified me so much because I do not feel the same way that I used to feel before and I don't even feel bad about all the things that I'm telling you that I did because I'm a new person like I really am a new person like I'm not the same person I don't even feel I don't even like to remember any of those things my divorce my times at the club like my crazy friendships and seasons of life when I was just being crazy like I don't even feel like that was me and that wasn't me that was the devil just playing with me but then god truly truly he truly healed me from that and he still is he's still working in me um i have never had so much peace as i have right now and the reason why i didn't want to share this testimony before is because i felt like god still had to do more things in my life and he still has and he still probably will but i don't care if that happens or not because i have peace and i have salvation i know for a fact that i'm gonna go to heaven because all i needed to do was to trust him and make him my father there is this verse in the bible that really moved me um i don't want to read the entire verse so i'm going to read the parts that i really like about it but just know it's jeremiah chapter 3 the title is hope for the way war israel and is from verse 11 return home you way war children says the lord for i am your master i will bring you back to the land of israel and when your land is once more filled with people says the lord you will no longer wish for the good old days when you possess the ark of the lord's covenant you will not miss those days even remember or even remember them they will no longer stubbornly follow their own evil desires i thought to myself and this is god speaking by the way i would love to treat you as my own children i wanted nothing more than to give you this beautiful land the finest possession in the world i look forward to you calling me father and i want you to never turn from me my wayward children says the lord come back to me and i will heal your wayward hearts only in the lord of our god will israel ever find salvation and then in chapter 4 it says oh israel says the lord if you wanted to return to me you could this is to israel but it is really to all of us you can return to jesus like i did and like a lot of people are doing it because he's the only one that can give you that salvation and if you just let him in just a little bit you can see what i'm talking about because once you're there he's gonna work in wonderful ways he has already given me so many confirmations about so many things he makes things way easier when they're supposed to happen in his will when things are not supposed to happen and you still want them He's not going to make it happen. Just letting you know in advance. This is not like your typical magical spells that you make a wish and it's going to happen. God knows your plan. He wrote it. He knew you before you were born. Psalm 139 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He knows exactly what's in your heart. He created your entire path in life. You just have to trust him. Stop suffering because you're not getting what you want. Realize that if you partner up with him, that he's going to be able to fulfill you and deliver you. And you're going to find that happiness and that peace that you've been looking for. And even if you don't, he's going to be there to comfort you the right way. 
I know it because I've gone through it. And I want to give you some encouragement today and some truth. I got baptized last year, about a year ago, and I was still being disobedient and I was still not completely feeling safe. Um, but the work was being done in the inside. I wasn't aware of it. When I chose to be baptized, it's just because I wanted to make my faith public, which is part of the baptism but i read this about the baptism and i think it's important that you know it baptism symbolizes that you are burying your old self and are washed clean under jesus blood and when you come back up you are new you're no longer the version of you that people used to know you're starting a new life 2 corinthians 5 17 we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the father we too might walk in newness of life before it finishes i want to share the story of peter so peter was one of jesus disciples and he was the one that denied him three times jesus told him before he was crucified that he was going to deny him three times if you have ever read the bible or even seen the movie of the passion of christ then you know that this is exactly what happened they were killing jesus and they were doing these terrible things to him and peter was afraid of having the same things happen to him so when they asked him if they knew him he said he didn't three times after jesus resurrects there's this part in the bible where jesus redeems peter so jesus invites peter to have breakfast with him now in that moment the shame of peter could have reserved you know he's in front of his master who is now resurrected and he denied him three times he did the terrible thing he said he wasn't gonna do yet he let jesus redeem him for his mistake when they had finished breakfast jesus said to simon peter simon son of john do you love me more than these he said to him yes lord you know that i love you he said to him feed my lambs he said to him a second time simon son of john do you love me he said to him tend my sheep he said to him the third time simon son of john do you love me peter was great because he said to him the third time do you love me and he said to him lord you know everything you know that i love you jesus said to him feed my sheep in the very same setting where peter had denied jesus Jesus gave him the opportunity for redemption. Now, he told him to feed the sheep. The reason why I'm telling you this is because not only he redeemed him, but he reminded him that he had a purpose to follow. I didn't tell you all of this so you could feel bad about me because the reality is that I don't feel bad about myself. I am grateful for every single thing that happened in my life. It has made me the person that I am today. And if it wasn't because of that, I don't know if I would have had the need to find Jesus. A lot of times we think that the people who have it perfect are the ones that go to jesus or the ones that have a better relationship with him but this is the opposite and if you read the bible you're going to understand that jesus was always trying to build a relationship with those who needed it the most if you feel like you have a need in your life right now and if you're going through the valley right now just know that this is where jesus is going to find you this is where you have to seek him because if you have it all figured out and if you have a perfect life which i highly doubt then it's going to be way harder for you to have a relationship with him so take advantage of this situation and you don't have to cover anything bad that you have done all you have to do is repent for it because if you repent then your sins are going to be forgiven and you're going to be able to be right next to him which is what really matters just like peter when you sit with jesus in the charcoal of fire or in the valley don't think about all the things that you have gone through and don't let that define you you can tell jesus about it you don't have to cover it because he already knows it but you can tell him confess your sins let him redeem you so you no longer see yourself as a failure and you get to see the victory that you have in him because you do have a victory in him god's love is so much bigger than anything else that you can get from the world anything any person whether it is your husband your wife your best friend your career money your family nothing can beat his love for you and he wants to have a relationship with you and i know that if you just let him in you're going to be able to experience the same peace that i've experienced everything that i said is for you to understand that even though i went through all of that i am happier than ever 
because I have the salvation. I have his peace with me. I no longer feel tempted to do things that I used to do. I no longer feel guilty for the things that I used to do. I no longer feel like that 17 year old girl who felt rejected all the time and was looking for satisfaction in watching things that weren't of God. I feel so much different. I feel like a completely new person and I hope the same for you. If you have any questions, just know that you have a sister in me. Please send me a DM on Instagram. If you want, you can subscribe to this channel. If not, just the fact that you have watched this video up until this point means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, you'll find the same salvation that I found. Jesus loves you. I love you too. Thank you.